it's four jokes, yes. Oh, okay. Okay, look, the reason I'm here actually, because you're probably thinking who, who on earth is this person, is because I do write books and I'm really passionate about um, cycling and uh, I wrote a book about hill climbs, I wrote a book about Alvengas and I'm doing a new book about the end to end which I'm quite excited about. Um, but my children don't see it in the same way, that when I do something like this they just they call it shouting in a cafe. And, um, <laughs> so like when I left the house today and and, and my mum says, oh, you know, oh, Daddy's going away to do this, uh, he's going to talk and stuff. And, and Penny turned to Elliot, she's like, yeah, he's just shouting in a cafe. And that's, that's kind of how, how I stand for them, so um, I'm to share that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I wrote books, about three people read them. Um, and, um, one of those was my mum, and I think the other was uh, Christina. Um, but what I will say is, firstly, thank you for the invite, it's lovely to be here. Um, it's an honour to be with you as, um, as uh, all of you as members of Reading CC, but also because you're uh, keeping the flame burning for long-standing Reading clubs, Les Bon, uh, Les bon Ami, I don't know quite how you say that, the plural, but, um, and the Wheelers. Um, we're two great clubs, and now it's this one great club, and it's, you know, with your numbers, like two, in, you know, 200, it's a real sustainable um, community uh, institution and getting people on two wheels, sharing the fellowship of the road and, and however we talk about it and however we like sort of whatever banter we have, whatever kind of jokes we have, we're still sharing that fellowship of two wheels and, and, and that's something I believe in really, really passionately and I, and I love it and um, you know I rode here earlier on so I, I, I rode from um, Bristol um, and I had a, and, and as I was riding here and the reason big, I rode here big actually, uh, the, <laughs> to it. the reason oh, I wrote okay. here was because there was a stonking like westerly and, it was like, and I, felt, I felt superhuman for a while, I felt like my average speed was up and it was, it was really great. But, but I, I also had a joyous time, like I came through Avebury and I, um, and I had sort of those strange cycling encounters that you have on the road, just odd things that happen, you know I saw a, a field full of catalibrates and it just seemed really odd and un, unusual and then I and then gradually as I got nearer to Reading the red kites started to appear because we don't have those in Bristol you know we just we have sheep and then or, or people I don't know but we don't have red kites anyway as I as I got closer I started to see these red kites and I and I felt like there was a lovely experience like there was something cycling was transcending something for me in a, in a really really nice way um, so before I get onto hill climbs really quickly I do also want to say something that when the invite came um, the person I thought of immediately was Clive Pugh um, and, and I'm imagining that the number of you in here or some of you or all of you or maybe none of you know Clive Pugh as a, as a Reading Wheeler and um, because I came across him when I was writing a book about Alf Edgars, um, and he came third in the National 50 in 1976 and, and, and a chap called David Pantney who was a, an incredible bike, um, tourist and he was a member of the Rough Stuff um, Art, uh, Fellowship uh, I don't know if you've seen that book that came from Max Leonard, the Rough Stuff Archive, or seen it on Instagram. A lot of those photos were by Dave Pagney. But he sent me this picture of a sequence of pictures from this National 50 in 1976. And Clive Pugh's there on, uh, on this um, you know, time trial sort of podium, and he's up there getting his um, third place behind uh, Les West or Granny West, if you've heard of him. And, and, and I saw something in Clive Pugh, I saw something that really sort of encapsulated cycling for me in the amateur spirit and, and he seemed like a really joyous character so it's, so it's also another reason why I'm really really glad to be here. Um, you know, so I, 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 everyone I met, like when I was speaking to our fingers as well, they were always at pains to point out, you know, what a sort of hero, I guess, to them in many ways Clive was. So it's, it's nice to have that past come alive for a really brief flickering moment. Um, and recall those times and the things um, Clive did, you know, and, and the pictures of him riding. So anyway, on to hill climbs, um, and I will say congratulations on taking on the most uh, vile, deviant event um, in the calendar. It's disgusting. I would say, if there are any hill climbers here, put your hands up, but you're probably too weak for not eating to like put your hands up. And, uh, we've got some hiding at the back. You know, like, yeah, so it's like. 
You know, until you I can't, work. you know, they probably, um, and you've not eaten anything this evening, I'm sure, just because you're getting ready. But um, it is um, it is a brilliant event. It's like an end of season jamboree, and it, it's not like anything else on the time trial and calendar. Um, it, it is a, because uh, it, it draws out, for example, all of the, the, the time trialists, all of the roadmen, um, anyone and everyone. It, it's, it's a really sort of spectacular thing. Um, it draws out the specialists as well, the specialist hill climbers, you know, the famine victims. And they, um, they come out of the woodwork and they, and they do their best to sort of defy gravity and beat all the other people who are really good at everything else. Um, and I, I used to do them, and I used to remember the rake, for instance, as a fantastic climb, and I think that's a bit like yours on a street league. And I remember riding up the rake in the National, and, uh, and I was about halfway up, and it just felt like something popped in my eye, like something, <laughs> like, and something not right happened in, inside here somewhere. Like, I just was like, that's not, something wrong has happened to me. And, um, and I sort of that summed up hill climbs, and I didn't do them for a lot longer after that. <laughs> Sense, that sense of when you, before you're riding an event, you just don't know if you're going to have a hernia, any <laughs> um, prolapse, or anything. And I think that for that reason, I have to say, you know, it's, it's a challenging, challenging event, but it is a brilliant thing. So I stopped doing it, but then I channeled it into writing. And I wrote a book about hill climbs. And the reason I wrote a book about hill climbs is just because I love them. I, clearly not because I wanted to make lots of money. Um, because it was, you know, you can't, don't make a lot of money from selling free books. But <laughs> over, the, over the course of that, I interviewed lots of incredible people. I interviewed Vic Clark, who won the event in 19... Um, uh, testing myself, probably 1948. Um, a year later, Bob Maitland won it, who rode the tour um, in, the, in the early 50s for BSA. Um, Brian Robinson won it in 1952. Um, you know, one of the first tour stage winners for the UK. And I got to interview these people, and I got to talk to people like this, Eric Wilson from Ramsbottom. And it was a joyous thing to hear these stories, like just drifting out of time. Um, and to, to sort of illuminate our lives now, and also see how everything's changed and yet at the same time like nothing's changed we still just love riding our bikes um, I spoke to Callum Goff you know he told me about riding on the Horseshoe Pass in uh, 78 I think and it was snowing and he resorted before the start to pissing on his freewheel to get rid of the ice. Um, and I remember talking to Daryl Webster when he did a hill climb in Chalakum um, in Devon and it was such a horrible event and I asked him about it and he just said, I can't really say anything, it was just shit or bust. <laughs> and I remember Granville Sidney who was a really, really special character as well who won it six times and beat all of the experts in their own sort of thing. But in, I think for all of that I sense also what it means to the amateur. This is an event that means a lot to people who just love to ride bikes um, and it has a lasting impact on their lives. Um, right now I'm coming to the end of a, a book about the end-to-end um, -end record. Um, which, um, and I've met lots more people. I met Dick Poole um, uh, about two years ago and he lives near here and he's at the track and he's this He's this mind-blowingly brilliant, lovely, lovely person. I met Eileen Sheridan, Pauline Strong, Gethin Butler. You know, so I feel, I feel almost, you know, this is a, a dream for me in a sense. And Mike Broadwith, I went with him for the record. Um, and I rode the route. I did things, stupid things, like I rode from Land's End to Bristol in a day, which for me is a stupid thing. And, and, I, and right now I've got a deadline and I'm trying really, really hard to bring all of these threads together, to knit this book together, to make it something important and a book that people want to read. And what I've learned from this process and what I've learned from talking to people who won hill climbs, who, who won, you know, people like Clive Pugh, people like Mike Broadwith, who's done the end to end. Um, and what I've learned weirdly, actually, I was watching Winter Watch the other day. I don't know if you've seen that, but there was uh, uh, someone who wanted to see killer whales and, and she mentioned something really, really similar about it. So I just thought I'd share that. And what I've learned from this is that life is in the doing of things. It's not about the talking about things. It's not talking about how, oh, wouldn't it be great if we hold and organise the National Hill Climb? It's not about, wouldn't it be great if I did a hill climb? It's about doing these things. And that's when life, you know, paradoxically and stupidly comes alive. That's when we, we live our best, I think. It's in the decision to get up and make things happen, not to let other people do it, and it's in taking this, your club, taking this spectacular event, puts you in that camp. Because, more importantly for me, you're creating a framework here 
for people and they are just the most ordinary people. They are the people that you don't know and you will meet on the day. You're creating a framework for them to live the best version of their lives. And that is something that's quite hard to explain. You're creating a scent on Streetly on that day. People will ride up this hill and they will experience their, what it's like to ride through a wall of people, which never happens. Like you don't, you know, you see Dutch Corner on the television on the Alp and you see these things happen, but, but our, the closest approximation we can ever get to that is riding up the National Hill Climb for two and a half minutes through a dense wall of people. And that's, that's why it's important, I think. It's because you're going to enable people to experience an emotional intensity that doesn't happen anywhere else. And someone who put this better than me is Tej Van Pettinger, who said, um, you know, he talked about hill climbers being, um, I don't really know what happened in that two and a half minutes, but I do know that I lived completely intensely in that time. And I think that's important. And, and sort of before I wrap up, I said there's a simplicity here as well. Like this is a really pure event. Uh, and I don't want to over egg that. Yes, there's so much change in cycling all the time. But the type of technological change for the hill climb, and especially for your climb, because it's a two and a half minute special, which is the best kind. Four minutes for the long <laughs> version. <laughs> for, <laughs> it, uh, uh, yeah. it'll, be, it'll be six minutes for me when I find my eyeballs just like lurched out of my head. But, but the, um, the type of technological change is really minimal. So you're actually very, very close to the original spirit of cycling, as close as you can get. Now you can, you, there's lots of things you can do to make yourself go quicker, but when it comes to the primal force of a hill, you cannot diminish that through slipperiness and through things like CDA and your, and whatever people talk about. You can't, you've got to go uphill really, really fast. It's a diamond frame, it's, it's gonna be a fixed wheel, you know, it's those kind of things. It's drillium, it's box sections, it's RAN profiles. Those are the weapons that you see in the sort of chase against time and gravity. So someone like Granville Sydney would recognise the winner's bicycle um, at, in this last weekend of October. And he might, he might lift it up and go, oh bloody hell, that's light, you know. But at the same time, he would see it as part of the same continuum. Whereas someone maybe like Frank Sanford, like an Olympian from 1930s, he might look at a time trial bike and think it's, it's been sculpted by an alien. I think, and I think that's the point I'm trying to make in terms of difference. You know, Malcolm Elliott's course record on Monsell still stands. Phil Mason at Catford, you know, we're talking getting on for 35 years. Those records still stand, and I think that's, an, that's, that's again this similar sort of point. So, National Hill Climb represents an opportunity for everyone to be involved and a chance to live life to the very fullest, at its most intense and most vivid. Um, outside of the world of work, now I do like my work, but I don't want to sort of, sort of diminish that, and um, I guess I'm not talking about the writing there, but anyway. But it's, it's, it happens in this space um, where the things that we think about and worry about tend to just slip away. Um, so it's an extraordinary thing, it's driven by the amateur spirit and by enthusiasm and determination. So the juniors are going to ride up in October. And in the past, to give you an idea of the juniors that ride up, you just got to look at 2006 on Peak Hill when Adam Blythe and Luke Rowe rode that race, rode that National Hill Climb as juniors. Or you've got to look at Alex Dowsett riding it, or Nicole um, Cook riding and winning both the juniors and the adult seniors. You've got to look at the Grand Tour stage winners will be there, the Grand Tour stage winners of the future. So Chris Boardman, three times National Hill Climb champion. Brian Robinson, you know, uh, National Hill Climb champion. Again, we talked about Alex Dowsett, Euro stage winner. They ride these events. You've got the next generation of riders. The last one I did in 2013. You had Hugh Carthy, who is just doing incredible things now. Um, Joss Loudon, um, who makes time trial at the world. James Knox, I don't know if you saw, came sort of 12th at the Vuelta. You know, he was, a climb, he was a hill climber. All of those cut their teeth on this incredible event. And it's gonna be won by someone extraordinary, that much we know. Someone who like, takes, takes our breath away with their effort. And people will go away and they will be inspired by this event. And, and that, that's the next stage, isn't it? A child will watch it and they will be told by their dad to ring that cowbell and they'll ring that cowbell, but they will go away and something will lodge in, the, in, in their mind and they will want to be like Andy Feather or they will want to be like Callum Brown. And someone, someone, anyone going away will, will go away and sort of dust off their bike and think, do you know what, I'm going to ride a hill. I'm going to do, get back on my bike. I've left it too long. 
And those are the sort of gentle inspirations that we talk about. And I'll be there as well. And you'll know it's me because I have a scarf <laughs> that I wave that's really offensive. And I wave it really aggressively at riders. So please say hello and um, don't, don't, be, don't judge me on my scarf. But um, I wish you the very best of luck with it. Um, it's worth remembering that you can't please all the people all the time as well, especially when you're an organiser of an event and a really, really big one. But in taking on this challenge, you're doing a wondrous thing for a wondrous community of people. That's, so yeah, that's it, that's all I wanted to say. Okay.